Today's guest is no stranger to Royal Knees Up. More than 10 years after his epic Diamond Jubilee performance for the late Queen, he has assembled one of the biggest choirs yet, just in time for King Charles' coronation after party. Well, let's hope there's some spare soprano spots for us loose women or not. Please welcome Gareth Malone. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Would you like a little flag, please? Don't feel left yes, out. Yes, there we go. <laughs> that's marvellous. That's marvellous. Oh, wow. Very nice. So this is Sing for the King, which actually goes out tonight, tonight 8 at 8pm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Great choice of song. Why did you go for that one? I, it was. It's a difficult Venn diagram of has to sort of work for a... a Venn diagram? A Venn diagram. Okay. <laughs> <Math. laughs> <Math. laughs> uh, yeah, it's got to work for a royal event. It's got yeah. to be uplifting, because I think we all need that, don't we, in yeah. Britain at the moment? And, uh, you know, it has to have the right kind of sentiment. We've got people of different faiths. So it just, yeah, it was a tricky, long process of deciding. Yeah, and, and the mood of the moment is kind of mixed because we know yeah. that a lot of people are going through really difficult times. It's maybe not the same as it was at the Queen's uh, Jubilee where everyone was kind of mm -hmm. hyped up and everything was great. So, you know, it's, it's catching the tones that is important. I think it's it? really difficult. I, um, I'm hoping that by Sunday night we've come out of the gloom. I mean, I've had my heating off for <laughs> most of this winter and, yeah. and I, I'm, I'm ready for a little bit of sunshine. Yeah. And a bit of just, I don't know, spiritual, spiritually uplifted by the end brighter of the weekend. Brighter days. A brighter yeah. day. That's, yeah. That song is really good, though. I've just, like, name dropped, but I've just texted my friend Emily. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I just said to her, what does it mean to her, you yeah. guys doing that? Oh. And she said she can't wait to see how many people are uplifted by it, because oh. it is that moment, that's what the song was oh. about. Well, I, I had a little chat with my, so. fr my friend Emily, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> as well, um, it, it's part of the documentary, and she was saying that she wrote it during lockdown. Mm and imagined this moment where thousands and thousands of people might sing this at a festival. Oh, yeah, so we're, yeah. Oh, we're doing lovely. that for her, which yeah, is going to exactly. be great. For those of us who don't, you know, rub shoulders with such people, it's Emily Sandy yes. and uh, Bright Today. M.M.s for everyone else. <laughs> and how did, how did you choose the song? I just, um, I, it, it was a long list of, of you know, everything from Elton John to Coldplay to uh, um, all the other men. Um, <laughs> and I, I thought, I, I actually thought it should be uh, a woman and, uh, that wrote the song, but that wasn't kind of the main, the main thing. But it's just, you get a feeling in your waters when the song's right and when it's, when it's lyrically not quite right. It, you know, we also we've got we have um, a, a deaf signing choir. I know you had Rose yeah, on the other. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and she was very. She's adamant that this is a deaf signing choir. This isn't a choir of people who are doing some BSL. This is everyone in the choir is deaf. So I had to think really carefully about the lyrics that they were going to sing. They can't sing about you know um, anything to do with hearing. So you have to be very. Mm. I, yeah. We've got Muslim singers in there. We've got um, yeah, fishermen. So what level got... of anxiety <laughs> <laughs> must oh. you be? Oh, you see, they're looking as cool as a cucumber. Because you've got a no, live just, performance been... on Sunday night. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's been very sweaty uh, because we until about three weeks ago we didn't have the song chosen. We didn't have anything arranged. It was really wow. it's been very close to the wire. And of course, because it's three hundred people from all over the country, we've got Northern Ireland, Scotland, every all parts of the UK. Um, you can't bring them together. So I didn't hear anyone sing until last Saturday. Oh. I had this nightmare where uh, I was in the rehearsal room and the full orchestra were assembled, the choir were there, and I was conducting, and nobody knew a note. The orchestra didn't know what song they were doing, they were all looking in judgment at me, and it was all going wrong. And then water started to fill the room, oh. and I ended up sort of at the top of the building, kind of bobbing around, trying oh to oh, oh, oh. That is a classic anxiety <laughs> dream, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. Absolutely. But, but you're, you're friends of the Royals, you've performed I'm with friends them. Friends is going a bit far. I have, <laughs> but I have, yeah, I've performed at events like this before, but, it, I mean, when you walk out on a stage like, like that, it, it, it's, it's visceral, it's just, you know... Thousands of people right there. It's like a sort of, it's like a wild beast to be tamed. It's very frightening. Yeah. Have you performed for Charles before? Well, actually, I have. My weirdly, when I was asked to create a choir, uh, my, my the very first choir that I ever worked with, with was for the London Symphony Orchestra. Mm. I'd never done it before. I'd never worked with choirs um, other than being a choir member. And they said, "Oh, we're we're doing a big uh, gala at." Windsor Castle for then Prince Charles. And so he was at my very, very first ever conducting.
Wow. Oh and, and what about the Queen? You've, yeah. Have you met the Queen? The Queen? I the did, uh, do you mean, commit, do you mean the late Queen? The late Queen. Not the Queen to be. I met the Queen on a number of occasions, actually. I had quite a few conversations with her. My favourite was uh, the first time I met her, I was at the, uh, I was at the palace and I was walking around because it's an amazing... I was at Buckingham Palace, wow, artwork everywhere, and looking at the artwork, and then she just sort of popped out from behind a pillar. <laughs> and it was just me and Her Majesty the Queen. And oh. I realised quite quickly that she knew who I was, which was sort of yeah. very strange, yeah, a weird thing being on television, I suppose. But she, she was delightful. We had a lovely conversation about music and concerts that, she, that they put on at the oh, palace. Wow. So I, I was a, a huge fan. And she was very, very much like my grandmother. Same generation, same, uh, same accent, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I found her very easy to talk to. Yeah. Well, listen, very best of luck uh, for well, Sunday night, yeah. the performance at uh, Windsor Castle. I'm sure it will be fabulous. And, of course, tonight, Sing for the King, the story of, uh, of that choir coming together, 8 o'clock on BBC One. Right, the story Gareth. of my anxiety. The story <laughs> of Gareth Malone's anxiety. Well, listen, don't worry, we'll calm your nerves a little bit. Stay with us.